enjoyed this song as much as we used to when we were all able to gather together. All right. I know your screen says preaching with the pumpkin. So let me explain. Let me explain. Okay. You know, Pastor D is always looking for uh, and asking God for a creative way to um, teach his word to you. So I was walking in the store and I started to see a whole lot of pumpkins. Have you been seeing those pumpkins around the store? It is harvest season and we're preparing and we're getting ready for Thanksgiving. I know some people may be even celebrating Halloween, but this is a different conversation. And so as I was seeing the pumpkins, I had the bright idea. You know what? I probably can preach a whole sermon off that pumpkin. And I did, I will, and we will be learning about God by using this good old pumpkin. So I went to the store. Can you see my pumpkin? I went to the store and I got a pumpkin. I sure did. I went to the store and I got a pumpkin and I am going to use that pumpkin for the next few weeks. And we're going to be learning about God's word using this pumpkin. And we're starting it off today. All right. So our lesson, our memory verse, let's go to our memory verse. Our memory verse is 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Write that down. Middle school is third, fourth, fifth, sixth. If you can write, you can read. I need you to write this down, all right? And you can pause your screen if you need to. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, and it reads, if anyone belongs to Christ, then he is made new. The old things have gone and everything is made new. Or the way I taught it to the preschoolers and they have the message translation, if you are in Christ, the old is gone, the new is here. Yes, 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, if you are in Christ, the old is gone, way by to it. Then you bring it back, the new is here. All right. And our lesson objective, what are we going to be learning today? That when we accept Jesus, he cleans out the gunk we call sin and makes us into something new. When we accept Jesus, he gets all the gunk out of our life. That's why he sent his son. That's why he had to die on that cross because he wanted to die so that we don't get dis disconnected from him because of the sin. What is sin? The things we think we say or we do that displeases that displeases God or breaks his rules or keep us separate from him. He wants us to all be able to live the good life. And most importantly, he wants us all to be able to enter into this amazing paradise called heaven. So we need to get the sin out and he helps us to get the sin out. So he takes the gunk out and he makes us into something new, something better something that we'll get to experience him. So here are some lesson terms, lesson terms. The first term is gunk. Yes, a gunk is an actual word. The first term is gunk. Gunk is an unpleasantly sticky or messy substance. I don't know about you, but in life I found myself in some gunk, some unpleasant, some sticky, some messy situations, all right? Thank God for Jesus. All right, the second term is sin. Sin is anything we think, say, or do that separates us from God. Clean, free from dirt, marks, or stain. Thank God for Jesus again. He makes me clean. He took the mess that I got myself in, and with the blood of Jesus, I'm made clean. No marks and no stains when he looks at me. Thank God for Jesus. Another lesson term, new, having but lately come or being brought into existence. New, having but lately come or being brought into existence. And accept. Accept means consent to receive. There are a lot of amazing things that God has for us, but we have to be willing to receive them and accept them. And even this newness. Yes, even you, from kindergarten all the way to fifth grade, you had this unpleasant substance or idea that you couldn't do math or maybe you couldn't read or you couldn't listen. Well, guess what? I'm getting that gunk out and we're going to talk about how God helps us to get the gunk of I can't out and shows how what is impossible with man is possible with God. And he makes you new so that you are a ready learner. You will learn to read. You will learn to do your math problems and you will learn to be obedient because you're going to accept the correction, the direction and be a new person. So that's what we're learning about today. And um, full of gunk. So I have my pumpkin here. I hope you can see my pumpkin. Yes, you can see my pumpkin. So I have my pumpkin. And um, with this pumpkin, I wanted to teach you guys a lesson as I straighten my lightning out lighting out all right so i had this pumpkin with this pumpkin i had to carve around like so so we can open it up all right and when i open this pumpkin i don't know if you can see it there's a whole lot of gunk in there you see that stuff you see that stuff this is a whole lot of gunk that's in this pumpkin 
And a pumpkins are full of goop and gunk when we first open them. All right. When you first open them, there's a whole bunch of gunk in there. But in order for us to be able to put the light inside of the pumpkin, right? When we carve it into a nice face, in order for us to put the light in, you got to get all the gunk out. So there's this little scooper that it came with. And uh, it gets all the stuff out of it. See all of this? We got to get all of the stuff out. So we got to get all the gunk out. When we take all the gunk out, then the once messy pumpkin that was full of substance and stuff that doesn't smell too pleasant. <laughs> once we get it all out, then we clean it out first. And then the light can shine in it and be shined through it. And that's the same way that God does with us. When we accept Jesus into our hearts, he cleans all the gunk that we call sin. Anything that we think, anything that we think, anything that we say, anything that we do that can be displeasing or doesn't represent him, that separates us from him. He has to clean all of that out of us it's because he wants to make us into something new. And you know what I realized? with this gunk yes there is some gunk that was in there some little slimy substance that you can see but guess what else i found that attached to the sliminess of the gunk are some seeds and the seeds if washed and clean and seasoned and put in the oven they actually taste really good but i would have missed out on the good thing because of the gunk and the goop that was surrounding it so I had to be willing to realize that mixed in with the mess is some good stuff that I can use. So what looks like gunk to, to me and you, to someone that is a baker or someone that knows about cooking, they said, uh-uh, that's all of that. Don't throw it all away. No, don't throw it all away. There is some good stuff in there that we can take substance of, some good stuff that we can eat. If you season it right and dress it right, there is good in it. And that's what God does for us. Instead of throwing all of it away, he takes out everything that is displeasing and not helpful to us. He takes out all the bad and he lets us know there is some good in us that he can use. You're not all bad. Um, people like to say, man, those kids are bad. I don't like to believe that things are bad because when I read in Genesis, it said that everything that God made, when he made the trees, he said it was good. When he made the water, he said it was good. When he made the, the grass and the animals, he said it was good. And when he made man, he took the time to make man in his image. And when I think about God, I think about everything that is good and that is right. And if I'm made in his image, then that means that that goodness was in me when he created me, when he thought about me. It was good in there. But life will have to put some gunk, will let us get caught up in some gunk, right? Social media will let us get caught up in some gunk and some mess and going live and talking about people. Experiencing failing a grade could put in some gunk and make us think that we are incapable of learning. Maybe some gunk could be that you tripped and you failed and people laugh. So now you find yourself being insecure or shy to be in front of people. But there is some good in you. So when we get all of the gunk out, we see that just like the seeds in the pumpkin, there was good that God can use. All right. So what looks like gunk to man can be used for good by God. God can use the good stuff, the seed in your life. So there is good in you. Say there is good in me. Say that there is good in me. I'm not all bad. There is good in me that can go unseen because of the gunk. Could it be? That people don't see the good in your personality because of the gunk or your facial expressions or your bad attitude. So what we have to do, let the word of God, the love of God, our worship, create and soften our hearts so that people can see I'm not all gunk. I'm all good. I'm not all gunk, but I'm all good. All right. So put my pumpkin to the side. So don't let the good be hidden because of the gunk. There is good in you, but it can be hidden and tucked away because of the gunk of our sins, our bad choices, our bad behavior, our bad actions, or maybe even our bad thinking. But there is good in you. Don't hide the good stuff because you don't want to get rid of the gunk. 
You got to get that mess out of the way because there is good in you. And because God sees you and he sees the good, he won't be able to use the good if it's wrapped all up in the gunk. So what you got to do, throw the gunk out. So what I have in my scooper is this, if you can see, this is just the good stuff. I took and I got all as much as the gunk out as I could. And I'm going to put it in water. I'm going to rinse it out. And I got rid of the gunk. I don't need the gunk. I throw the gunk away. I don't reach for the sin or the bad attitude. I reach for the smile and the kind response because I threw the gunk out. Because I've been learning about the love of God and having compassion for others. And because I know what it felt like to be teased. I don't tease people. I throw the gunk out and I correct others that are doing that. I don't say that I can't do math. I throw the gunk of I can out and I make the effort. I try because there is good in me. I have a good mind. I have a good hand and I'm a good learner. And because I am good, then I got to get the gunk of how bad I am out. So you got to throw the gunk out. Everybody say that. Throw out the gunk. Yes, throw out the gunk. All right. So I want to close out, of course, with the biblical close out. And there is a story about a man named Zacchaeus. All right. That is found in Luke chapter 19. If you go to verse number one and we're going to stop at verse 10. So Jesus was going through the city of Jericho and in Jericho, there is a man named Zacchaeus and he was a wealthy, very important tax collector. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but he was too short to see above the crowd. He ran ahead to a place where he knew Jesus would come. He climbed a sycamore tree so he could see Jesus. When Jesus came to that place, he looked up and saw Zacchaeus in the tree and he and he said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down. I must stay at your house today. Zacchaeus came down quickly. He was pleased to have Jesus in his house and all the people saw this and began to complain. Look at the kind of man Jesus stays with. Zacchaeus is a sinner. But Zacchaeus said to the Lord, I will give half of my money to the poor if I have cheated anyone. I will pay that person back four times more. Jesus says, salvation has come to the come to this house today. This man truly belongs to the family of Abraham. This this the son of man came to find the lost people and save them. So Zacchaeus was a tax collector. Tax collectors were unpopular in the days of Jesus. Tax collectors could come around and make people pay more money than they should have owed. And then they collected and they pocketed and they keep the remaining money. So basically saying Zacchaeus was a thief, you know, low key Zacchaeus was a thief. And people don't really like thieves because you steal it from people, right? So Zacchaeus wanted to see Jesus, but he came short. How many of us wanted to see Jesus? We just wanted to see, but we came up short. We were um, not diligent enough or not disciplined enough or just unwilling to do what it takes to see Jesus. But on this particular day, you get to a point in your life, little, even you, little kids, you get to a point in your life where you just want to do better. You're just tired of messing up. You're tired of getting in trouble. You're tired of getting write ups. You're trying to get a paddle and you want to see Jesus. You want to see the light. You want to try something different. And this is where Zacchaeus was. Zacchaeus looks Zac Jesus looked straight up at the guy and he called out him by name. God knows your name. He knows your name and you are so important to God that the Bible says he even know how many hairs are on your head. Can you believe that? I don't even know how many hairs are on my own head, but God knows and he knows your name and he sees you and he knows that you are tired of getting in trouble. He knows that you are ready to get the gunk out and he is calling you out. I am being used by God today to call you out to say, I see you. And because I see you, I won't let you keep messing up. I won't let you keep coming up short. I am going to offer you the opportunity to make the choice to receive that there is good in you and to do your work to show more of the good by throwing out the bad. All right. So not only did Jesus know him by name, but he invited himself over for dinner. Jesus today is inviting himself into your life and saying, hey, I know you came up short. I know you think that I don't see you, but I do. I see you and I care. And I want to get to your house today. I want to get to the house that is your heart. I want to get to the house that is in your mind. So I want to come over. Will you let me in? All right. So Zacchaeus was a bad guy, but he let Jesus come over to his house. And as he said, and he learned about Jesus and he began to see the good that Jesus saw in him. Zacchaeus was a bad guy in the eyes of the people, but in the eyes of Jesus, Jesus knew that there was good in him. 
The people didn't want Jesus to be associated with somebody that was a sinner. They don't like it. The Pastor D loves on the people that the kids that, that get into trouble all the time. But I see the good in you and I love you. And I want you to see the good in yourself and be able to love you into something new. So Jesus was not into what people had to say. He didn't care about what he had to say. He was about wanting to heal, heal the individual person. So Jesus was not worried about how others viewed Zacchaeus. He knew that his mission from God at the end of the day was to save people and not lose them. He also knew that change is possible. Can you say that? Change is possible. It is possible for you to change, to be better, to be stronger, to be wiser, to be smarter. It is possible. And because he knew that Jesus offered Zacchaeus something he had never seen, an opportunity to be made new. So Zacchaeus was made new by his encounter with Jesus. And Jesus emphasized that he did not come just for good people. Jesus did not come just for the people that are always good. Jesus came for those that are truly lost and in need of a healing so that you can know that you can be well. So Jesus knows. So what are the lessons from the text? Jesus knows exactly who we are and he loves us still. If you are willing to bring your shortcomings to Jesus, he is there ready to receive them. And there is good in you that some may not see, but God sees it. And you can make the choice to change for the better because God makes us new. So there is good in you that God can use. And you know, before I leave, I got to give it to you in the beat. Drop the beat. There's good in me that God can use. There's good that God can use. Hey, there's good in me that God can use. There's good that God can use. Drop the beat. There's good in you that God can use. There's good that God can use. Say it again. There's good in me that God can use. There's good that God can use. I'm not a DJ, but I did want to let you know that there is good in you that God can use. Will you let him use the good? Will you remove all of the gunk, the doubt, the I can'ts, the worries, the whining and the complaining? You're not bad. Nope. And whenever you're getting ready to make the bad choice, you have to remind yourself, I'm not bad because everything that God made is good. And that means me. There is good in me. I can get a green. I can even get a pink. I can get A's. I can get on a roll. I can make that F into a C. I can do the work that is necessary because I'm giving my shortcomings over to God and I am receiving that there is good in me. I got to get God to help me get the gunk out. I love you guys and I'll see you next week. And until then, drop the beat. There's good in me that God can use. There's good that God can use. Hey, there's good in me that God can use. There's good that God can use. And that referred him to use it. I got to thrive. So let's do it. T-H-R-I-V-E. See you next week. I love you guys. Bye.